Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. It's a very beautiful day today, Miss Yale. Bright and sunny. Yeah, we, we, we got the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was okay in the morning. Now it's uh, cloudy and I think it's going to rain soon in, in the Bay Area. While we are waiting, I'll just share a quick update on PubSub and where we stand, if that's all right. Uh, so I addressed most of the feedback yesterday uh, and updated the code uh, accordingly. I still need to work on two things. Uh, one is uh, upshot connection uh, suggestions that you made rather than Share connection and like following the mechanism. Sorry, you're getting very quiet and your audio is getting choppy. Uh, give, me, give me a moment and I'll come back with that. Hello, can you hear me better? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I was saying I addressed most of the comments on uh, the PR. There are only two things now remaining, I think, if I haven't missed anything. One is uh, implementing absurd connection or like absurd uh, flow control just as mute. I think I saw it somewhere in mutator uh, implemented where like if, if a reconciliation is uh, a mid consolidation where the object is not actually getting updated, then like do consider those kinds of scenario and just update the reconcile loop. And one more thing I'm forgetting, but yeah. So other, other thing is not uh, that major uh, issue. So apart from that, uh, I implemented the uh, publish page logic as well. So everything else is there uh, on the PR right now. It got a little bigger, like <laughs> right now, I don't know how many commits are there. So getting out of hand. <laughs> uh, well, I, number of commits is whatever. Um, hopefully it's not, you know, a billion files. The <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's you, you can squash them. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that next time. Like when I come, when I do a rebase. I was afraid of losing feedbacks. I was not washing or force pushing. Oh no, it's, oh, it's okay. gonna be there in, in GitHub. Yeah, you can squash the comments. Oh, okay. I, I would prefer not squashing, like honestly, at all, because the merge squashes it. Yeah. Uh, just because that way, 
when we review, we can look at the delta from the last review, right? Which makes it a little easier to to see what's new. That that was the reason I was not uh, yeah, that makes like sense. rebasing and force pushing also. But now it's taking me quite some time to rebase and and bring in new changes. Oh, I see. I see. Um, uh, you should be able to just merge instead of rebase. Um, yeah, but if really? there is conflict, right? If there is a you, conflict, yeah, you just then... need to to, to uh, fix the the conflicts. So if you merge with the, the main branch, then I think it's it, less like, work than rebasing. I think merge has the same problem though of kind of yeah. destroying, like yes, squashing commits where it it destroys the history somewhat, right? So it's it's harder to to say what's changed. Doesn't right. uh, merge just add a merge uh, commit? Yeah, but it, then if you do the view of show me the delta for all the commits from my last review, it'll start showing uh, commits oh, from the merge. Yeah, well. it's a, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're well, saying. Yeah, but but if it's like taking a long time to rebase, yeah, just in my opinion, squash. Right, yeah. like there's there's no reason for <laughs> you to feel lots of pain to save a little bit of pain you know Re rebase is pretty painful yeah if you have to go yeah. through like everything yes yeah. yeah. i would say merge is the easiest one or you can just squash it i'm fine with it but <laughs> it does does merge solve like future problems though right if you need to re rebase I no, I think you would still need to like replay. I if you if with merge, you don't have to replay the entire thing. It's it's just yeah. takes the main branch and then merges with your branch. Okay, so that that's another way out of the issue. Yeah. And okay. it's somewhat better than the squashing all the commits, you know. Okay. Yeah, if it, if it works. because like, yeah, then the next time there's once once there's a review post merge, then I guess you get the only the deltas authored back. OK. Well, uh, should we get started with the agenda? Um, looks like Thomas uh, is first. Um, and please add to agenda for anybody else that I've done. So this. So I ran into this problem. You can click through the link um, to see it. I'm not, I'm not a Kubernetes expert, and this new security context stuff, I don't quite grok. And apparently, other people don't either. <laughs> so my my question is, what what's the source of the problem, and then what's the correct solution? And again, I'm running on OpenShift 4.12, which I don't know is what version of Kubernetes that is. Uh, One twenty four, maybe. Um, and I found a way to get around it, but I don't know if that's the correct thing. Switching from restricted to baseline on the namespace, because in the value in the Helm values .yaml, we do label the namespace as restricted. So I'm assuming that is on purpose, but. When I just run the normal Helm install, after it's installed, I cannot increase the deployments. For example, I can't I can't touch the pods. And again, I, as not being a Kubernetes admin, I don't know if that's just the way it should work. And you should know what you're doing, Tom. And you know, go talk to somebody else. It what's weird is it's uh, saying it's it, is how it's violating the pod security standards, right? Like. Uh, the the pod security standards stuff, from what I understand, it's it's like basically tiers of restrictedness, right? Where there's anything goes, then there's a baseline thing, and then there's the lockdown where you, you try to really minimize the amount of privileges at the the pod. Yeah, I, I, I pasted the link in the chat. Um, so th yeah, those so, are and, I've, and I've read through that, right? But my, right. I guess my, my question is, like, obviously, other people read through it, too. But there are two other users you know, on this issue with the same problem. And I'm assuming this will not be the last case of it as 
it gets more and more adopted. So uh, it's it, the, it, oh goodness. Uh, uh, yeah, is it is it the same violation all the time too? The the host port issue. Uh, let me open this again. It was really just creating pods. So it's not right, the host right. Port one. Um, I, so I think the original issue in this one is might be different. So I think in your case, it might be an OpenShift specific thing. Maybe that's uh, OpenShift. Couldn't set uh, maybe the um, I know like OpenShift had some differences with the what is it called um, the App Armor or AC Linux um, or, or or sorry it's set com profile I think that OpenShift handles it differently. Okay, so you think in my case it's it's purely an OpenShift. OpenShift right, is set up as certain, they're, they're restricted is, I can define, a, a cluster creator can define what restricted means. And you're thinking that OpenShift has done something, you know, in their restricted context, it means X. In another uh, Kubernetes restricted context would mean Y. Like there's so different I, flavors of restricted, you're saying? Uh, no, I mean, for the, the pod security standards, there's only one definition of restricted. It's it's those things in the bucket. Uh, but uh, I think I was saying that uh, for OpenShift, uh, it wants to do the, the sec comp um, setting for like the, I think, unconfined. I'm uh, sorry, it must not be explicit to unconfined. So it's either runtime default or localhost. And I think OpenShift, uh, it, it doesn't work with the SecCom profile. It has like a different way to do the SecCom pro profile, I think. Uh, so that might be the way that might be conflicting. Uh, do, you, do you have the logs or do you have the uh, any sort of why uh, thing? I, I mean, I can paste the logs in there, but really the original poster, those are the errors you see. But I can try to grab logs. Do, do you um, see? You, you, are you seeing the host port in uh, others also? Uh, because I remember we did something uh, OpenShift specific. Uh, let me try to pull this up. Um, yeah, and if you look at my values.yaml, like I have the seccom profile turned off. I, so I'm and, and again, I, you know, like I don't, I don't mean to debug it in this meeting. Like I'm happy to debug it on Slack. If there's, if you think this is really just a OpenShift or a Tom problem, and then the other two users they have their own flavors of that problem, right? But I think you know, stepping back, if there's something we could put in the docs for users like me to say, you know, this is if you see this, this is how you should approach it. This is what you should look at. That's kind of what I think this this forum here could help me with. I'm happy to contribute to the docs, but you know, I don't just know what to put there. That makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like going off of the the first user's error, uh, just because I see one on your post and you said it was identical. Um, it's mentioning host network true because the violation here is saying, hey, you're using the host nodes uh, networking stack, right? Um, and I posted a link to the charts values.yaml where the default for controller manager is host network dot false. Uh, I'm wondering, are you manually setting values dot controller manager? If so, uh, are you setting host network to false? I am not doing anything. The my values delta is in that mm -hmm. link in my comment, and maybe uh, I mean, you can see I take out the run as group and run as user. Because those those that user is too low, OpenShift enforces a higher user. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is a fairly large area, so it's it it is hard to say. Hey, this this particular thing is causing an issue. 
Uh, but I think uh, Rita linked to a doc that talks about the second thing. Um, yeah. It, yeah. The readout 11 is super old. Just FYI. I'll take a look at it and try to find the OpenShift 4 equivalent. But that's helpful, Rita. Thank you. Oh, no, no. That's the gatekeeper's version, not uh, <laughs> OpenShift version. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's Gatekeeper 311. Yeah, it is confusing. But it's OpenShift 4, though. <laughs> yeah, it is yes. OpenShift 4. So I, I did, I followed those instructions. That's but captured in my in my values.yaml as well. So the, the other debug step for me that I'd be interested in seeing is the value of the deployment as it exists on the cluster. Uh, just, just to see if there's something to the violation, right? And, and and also what violation text you're you're actually getting if if it is the the same like host port thing or if we're just marking up a wrong tree because it's it's there's some other policy it's it's violating. Yeah, I'll try to find that. I'll put it into the issue. Is that OpenShift is is sometimes weird in terms of different policies, which is the the tree Sirtash was chasing, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, so maybe we can just debug it more on Slack. And if my messages are different than the users, again, I think I do think the the outcome should be something in the docs, right? Cool. FAQ or in the you know like in this in that section. Um, that Rita pointed to. But I appreciate that. Yeah, there's, uh, if, if it does turn out to be cloud specific, I know we've definitely had some cloud specific tips before. The Google private clusters is the one I'm familiar with, but I think there was an OpenShift one previously too. The original post, uh, the original per, uh, comment, Hashi has the host network equal to true. And then that's definitely a violation. Um, yeah. So yeah. obviously they modified the default. Right. Or <laughs> that was a dog. <laughs> Sounds like earthquake. It, it's a big dog. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's um, let's respond in the comment, I guess. And Thomas, if you can uh, post a thread in Slack and then like post your the, the, the uh, your Helm values, I think that that would help with the investigation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Helm values, resultant values, error. Was there anything else people said? I'll respond to the original post to say the host network equal to true is not the default value we have. So that's probably causing the issue. I, I think host network is even, it, you can't even run it on baseline. Uh, that's like a pretty basic one, yeah. That's on baseline. So they, they need to remove the entire PSA completely. That's a pretty strong suggestion then that Thomas is a different error if baseline. Yeah. So I, I, I think so too. It's, it's a the fairly large area because of all these, like the, the pod security specs uh, are in this thing. So it's, it's hard to say it's just this one. Cool. <laughs> I'd say next topic, but uh, there ain't one. Now there's one. Oh, I added one. Uh, the RC is out. Yay. Very uh, well, I could I could add one quick topic. Uh, so I, I did uh, get a PR merge to 
um, change the, uh, the the container args to have a command in args. Would there be any disagreement in me doing that for the other places as well? So with the command, it overrides the entry point of a container, right? So the reason I added it because I have a, a container that that does have curl in it, but it's not the entry point, right? And so my goal is I want to ship one gatekeeper image. And in that image, it will have the CRDs. So the Helm by default, right, it uses the gatekeeper image and also a gatekeeper CRDs image. And from a, a, a build and release point of view, multiple images are just multiple images, pain in the ass. So I've been packaging the CRDs into the image, but I had to make the entry point Coop cuddle <laughs> to work with the Helm charts, which works fine because other places you do call manager directly, right? So I just want to know if like philosophically, does anyone have a problem with me poking around? And we can discuss on PRs obviously, but if there's a sort of philosophical, like don't touch this stuff, you know, I like to know that now. Uh, entry point for me, sure, fine, uh, that works. Uh, the, the one thing I will say about at least how open source is building the uh, image with the, what are they called, distroless containers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ideas behind that is to reduce the surface area to make things a bit more locked down security wise. Yeah. And uh, I get that from the, from the upstream. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I have to ship on RHEL 8, well, UBI 8 to the, I'll call it, the minimal, I'm using air quotes because it's still not super slim, right? Um, which itself has has curl in there, right? Like that's one of those surface areas that you probably want to avoid. In my case, it's convenient that it is in there, right? Okay, yeah. So as long as you're fine with yeah. the trade-offs on your end, like obviously yeah. this isn't even yeah. affecting so, open source, but yeah. yeah. My, my goal is to minimize the delta between upstream and downstream um, as much as possible. Um, and if I have to fix a, a CVE downstream, for example, like bumping the most recent one was the XNet that someone was talking about in Slack, right? And that went into uh, Gatekeeper 3.12, but I'll probably backport that to 3.11 because I'm already shipping that. I'll make the pull request against the 3.11 stream, cherry picking it upstream in, in the Gatekeeper code base. But if you don't accept it, that's that's okay. I, I prefer it because then I don't have to carry that cherry pick myself. It's those sort of things, you know, like I have a different, you know, service level than necessarily the community does, which is, which is fine. That's just the cost of shipping it. You know what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. And we, we can cherry pick those things. So feel free okay. to. Um, uh... Yeah. And I'm happy to do the, the legwork. Obviously I'm not pushing the release button and there's other, it'll, it will cost the release manager upstream time. To make another Z stream, whatever. Um, but cool, thanks. I appreciate that. And then, uh, in your previous comment, uh, I pasted a link. Uh, did, did, did you mean to add kubectl here as like a uh, comment? Which one? Uh, I, I just oh, yes. pasted in the link. Uh, so the upgrade CRDs hook, for example. Um, yes, yeah. So I could use the same image. And so this is say that if the UBI image already has kubectl, then you would just basically call that with command. Right. So this this line you link to, I would I would add the command and yeah. specify. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That's basically uh, we preserve the existing functionality, and then this is right. obviously invoking kubectl anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. The only time it would break is if somebody was relying on an image like the curl image. Right, if it didn't use entry point, because there's, there's another pattern, I can't remember what it is in Docker files, right? But there's not an entry point, there is no way to override it. So in that case, it would, if they're using the image where you couldn't override it, it would it would change, it would break potentially. Uh, there is the CMD, but I think entry point overrides that one. Uh, but I have to check. Yeah, but yes, my goal would be not to break anyone. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel like this would break anyone. 
maybe if someone else did their own like forking thing but it's not really part of our contract that <laughs> the docker image entry point is formatted just as such uh, i don't think yeah uh, this makes sense to me That's it for me. Cool. I guess I could give a quick uh, cell cap update. The uh, custom image matchers and the enforcement actions uh, did merge. So that's good. <laughs> the pieces are there. To, to leverage the cell cap. Uh, also, if people are curious, there, there is a PR to the Kubernetes blog. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, that was written by uh, Craig Box and uh, company that shows, oh, Mac, no, sorry, my cat likes to scratch my monitor. Uh, there it is, uh, that, that shows people working with the thing, if you're curious what it um, looks like from a user perspective currently. And I still, Thomas, I remember you, you asked like, hey, the, what about that compatibility or our plans for how to incorporate the cell cap into our project. I, I haven't written that yet. Sorry. <laughs> I will. I will wait. Uh, I will make a note. This is side note. On the YouTube videos, the chat is not included, which is unfortunate. Oh, that is. So as a person who often has meetings or times that conflict. Uh, let me see. I can put it on the dock for now as a. Yeah, that might be helpful. Yeah. Sorry but that's just for an FYI from your community. <laughs> that's a good FYI. Apologies for people who had no idea all the links that have been posted over the probably years. Thanks for the feedback. I think we, we, we just moved to uh, the YouTube links. Uh, you, yeah. Yeah, and the YouTube is great because it. it I think it gets automatically or I don't have to ping anyone to post the recording. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a big step in the correct direction, I think. Yeah, thanks to Peter for setting that up. So shout out to Peter. Yeah, uh, what do we do then for like some of the more casual stuff we have? Like uh, in just this chat, I posted a link to the default host port um, looks like there's a link uh, describing cloud-specific fixes and other other such stuff. Like, probably doesn't really belong in the meeting notes, but maybe. Well, it's the it goes along with the con with the video. Like, if someone watched the video and the notes and these meeting chat is cut and pasted into the doc. Yeah. That's the context. I that, guess you can start like copy pasting stuff from the chat to the notes to help people navigate. Would that be good? Yes. Alrighty. And I do need to drop for a different meeting. So enjoy your day. Thanks for your help. I'll see you on Slack. Under a new name, apparently. I don't know if there was, I can't log back in with my Red Hat email. It says I'm, it says there's no such account. And then when I try to sign up again, it says I'm already a member of the team. So I use my personal email, which worked. But 
Weird. Odd. I was getting messages on the open oh. policy agent Slack about like your your trial time is about to expire. Like maybe it threw me into some sort of trial corporate plan and now it's like, no, you're done. I, well, I think that I was the Slack's trial, I'm guessing. I think that was for everybody. Um, that's the only, that's the only thing. I used it this morning. I was on Slack this morning, and then it logged me out, and now I literally can't log in. But no, I have no. another, another account, so. Uh, if anyone has admin access, can we delete that account? Is that something that Slack lets us do? Well, it's not a blocker for me because I got in with my Gmail, but. Okay, I got to drop. Thanks. Cool. Any other topics, or do we want half an hour back? I'm okay with getting half an hour back. Cool. <laughs> Good to see y'all. Bye. See you. Bye.